Hey there guys, so this video that I've put together, um, basically the last six months worth of training. Now, you know, for me having an off season, I tend to have quite a long off season and that's simply due to longevity and I don't want to burn out in this sport. And you'll see a lot of people that compete, you know, in powerlifting, they do not last in the sport that long, you know, maybe three to five years on average. Um, for me, this is my 17th year competing in powerlifting. So yeah, look, you know, longevity is something that I'm really, you know, trying to, to keep in mind because, you know, it's easier to get really, really strong if you take your time and view this sport as a marathon as opposed to, you know, a sprint and just trying to get there as quick as possible. Now, when it comes to, you know, an off-season training or a prolonged, you know, deload, one of the things that goes through my head is, okay, you know, I've done my competition. Now, if I had an underlying, you know, injury, let's go with, say, a bulging disc. A really bad bulging disc would take, you know, the normal person roughly 12 weeks or three months, maybe four months to heal. So my mindset goes, okay, you know, I've maxed out my squats and my deads in competition. Um, you know, lower back has obviously been under really significant load. So, you know, just because the back feels, you know, good um, doesn't mean that there's, you know, anything that may not show up. Like, I could have a bulging disc and not be aware of it. And, you know, a lot of the population, I think it's about 30% of the population, have a bulging disc that causes them no pain and they're just not aware of. So, you know, in my head, I take the, the approach, okay, if I had a bulging disc, you know, let's give myself... 12 weeks to heal properly. Um, in that 12 weeks, I train a lot lighter and there is a far bigger emphasis on general fitness. That might be where you want to, you know, shed the additional weight you gained um, while you're bulking up. You know, really take your time to, to lean out, restore a fair bit of your uh, mobility and other health markers if you need. So that's sort of like the first, you know, 12 weeks of you know, a deload or an off season. Um, and then, you know, in that 12 weeks as well, you know, if bench is feeling good, you know, and you didn't, you know, pull up too sore from the comp in terms of upper body, give yourself maybe two, three weeks as a decent deload from bench. And then, you know, start chasing some of the higher reps and look at really building your assistant exercises um, that are going to have carryover to your primary lifts. Because at the end of the day, like if you're adding quality mass in the areas that you need and raising the base level of strength on all your assistant exercises, when it comes to your main lifts, they're going to come up, you know, significantly. And it won't take you long to get back to, you know, where you are plus a bit extra. Now, if you, for instance, you know, competed in, let's say, strongman and you never did bench press, but, you know, you thoroughly developed your overhead press and delts and triceps, when you go to bench press, you're still going to be far stronger than most people simply because you've built up your shoulders and triceps. Um, and then the bench press, you know, pecs, yeah, they might be lagging, but once you learn the movement, you know, you're going to bench, you know, a really decent weight. Um same, you know, approach can be said for the assistant exercises. You know, if you're working on your, your front squats, your overhead press, your triceps, um, hitting your front squats or the belt squat or the leg press or whatever you want, um, you know, and developing, you know, quality mass in those areas and strength, you know, in other movements, um, it is going to have carryover to your primary exercise once you get, you know, that motor pattern familiarity, you know, back. Um, and it can take a few weeks. And, you know, for me, I only, you know, squat, you know, traditional squat in a comp prep. Um, and it normally takes me about, you know, eight weeks of proper squatting to not only work back to where I was, but then also enter into, you know, PR range. Um, and that's simply because, you know, the whole of my off season, I just work on the areas for me that are weak. And, you know, for a long time, that was core and lower back. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like mucking around with the um, natural stone lifting and, you know, squatting with stones and the rest of it, because, you know, I got really good carryover to my lower back as well as, you know, good core development in a way that wasn't, you know, 
too taxing on the nervous system, but really taxed and fatigued the areas that I needed. So in terms of, you know, a quality off season, you're really looking at, you know, assistant exercises that are going to help build whatever you need. Now, If you're trying to go up a weight class, you know, the best time to do it is in the off season because you can afford to, you know, really bulk up and then cut. So, you know, lose the additional body fat that you put on Um, because in a competition prep, you you want to, you know, prepare yourself the best you can for the maxes that you're going to hit. And when I say prepare, you want to work towards the heavier numbers capitalizing on the underlying strength that you should have built in your off season now if you want to view off season as a period of deload and then a pre-season for your competition prep um, you can do it that way as well but you know a proper competition prep of say 12 weeks or whatever you're doing you're just preparing to capitalize on the strength that you already have if you're trying to build strength you know from weeks one to six you know to an extent you're going to build it but it shouldn't have been anything compared to you know the you know six months you may have had prior to that where you're really you know working hard on your four sets of eight or four sets of ten and really trying to build you know quality mass work capacity and the rest of it um trying to build mass work capacity all those sort of things in just six weeks isn't really that achievable um if you're a a newer lifter or new to the iron game then that's a different story but you know if you've got a decent level of strength you understand that it takes you know quite some time to get stronger and you know six weeks isn't going to have a big you know impact on you so it's more you know your competition prep you're literally just preparing and getting all your motor motor patterns on point so you really can capitalize on the strength that you have um you know when i go into a competition prep i try and keep my prep at eight to ten weeks um i find 12s a little bit too long and you know I normally start my comp prep you know hitting you know reps of five you know three to five reps and I spend a lot of time you know practicing you know heavy singles because at the end of the day powerlifting is a sport of heavy singles and that's what you have to do on the platform you know and once I've hit my heavy singles I'll go back and do you know some lighter rep out work and that's just to keep general work capacity a little bit of volume but also you know to keep the hypertrophy that I've gained in the off season but at the same token my back off sets are exactly that they're a back off they're not you know heavy hard sets where I'm working to failure versus you know the off season I might do you know some dumbbell bench press you know four or five sets of 10 reps and I'm happy to hit failure you know on the last rep or two you know whatever I need to do but as a back off set you know I want that bar to be moving well. I want the motor pattern to be nice and clean. I don't want to go into my next, you know, heavy bench session where, you know, my motor pattern on the bench, you know, it fills off because that's the, you know, that's how I left it in the previous session. So, yeah, competition prep really should be different to your off season. Now, you know, in a competition prep, again, if you wanted to work to failure, you wouldn't be doing that on the squat, the bench, or the deadlift. You'd be picking other assistant exercises that are much lighter in nature that you can sort of do almost as a pump or a finisher. An example would be um, front lateral raises, lateral raises, or um, rear delt flies. Any of those taken to failure, I mean, they're not going to overly tax you at all, but um, I wouldn't be taking, say, a leg press to failure or a front squat set to failure um, as an Consistent exercise in a true competition prep so yeah you know your off season different story push hard because at the same time you know in an off season you're not or you shouldn't really be going for you know heavy maxes or heavy triples you want to keep your cns relatively fatigue free and you want to drop all your energy just basically into you know getting bigger and getting more volume into your training occasionally you know you might get under a heavier weight just to stay you know familiar with the load um but if you're an experienced lifter you know and you have patience you know that you know your strength is going to come back really quite quickly it's just like taking you know an athlete you know in strongman that already has a really good strength base spending 12 weeks with them you know refining you know the squat bench and deadlift you know, and they're going to do really, really well at comp, even though they're not, you know, 
heavily invested just into the big three. And the same can be said, you know, with a lot of powerlifters. If you take them and put them in strongman and you work on the technique of a lot of the implements and bring, you know, some of the fitness aspects up, they're going to do really well as well. They're not going to be world-class overnight. And the same thing with strongman to powerlifting. They're not going to be world-class overnight because, you know, you really do have to master your sport and the movements that need to go into it occasionally yeah you get one or two exceptions but um the general rule is you know you need to practice your sport in your proper competition you know in season um and the off season again say for instance with strongman you know you might be going higher reps with the atlas stones working on general volume playing around with a lot more implements, you know, you might be hitting two sets of most of your, your competition movements and working quite hard because the two sets might only be, you know, two sets of eight to ten reps, but you're getting a lot of quality volume in and you're building your overall work capacity for your sport and for what you need. Um, so that's sort of like my take on it. And again, you know, in the off season, if you wanted to drop a weight class, you might dedicate, you know, six to eight weeks of, you know, really hard, clean eating where you want to drop as much body fat as possible. Yeah, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of strength, but it's an off season where you then have the time to reclaim it back. You're not going to want to be cutting or having much to do in terms of weight management in your competition block you know you're just adding another stressor to the body if anything you know leading into your competition block you want to be a little bit underweight so you can afford to eat more and get the additional recovery because if you can recover well you can sort of push your you know your heavy triples or your doubles or whatever you need you know a little bit more thoroughly or you might just do some extra volume with those numbers or you might just slightly up the frequency in your competition block, you know, if you're handling that 85% plus, you know, load, um, you want to give your body the tools to recover. And, you know, if you're feeding it well and getting quality sleep, instead of only squatting, you know, once heavy, once light in a seven day training block, you might be able to squat, you know, once heavy every five days, you know, and that adds up quickly. Um, you look at it, you know, you do that three times, you know, you're only sort of at day 15 versus the other people, you know, they do it twice, you know, they're at day 14, you know, you're picking up a fair bit of time. And at the end of the day, if you can really capitalize on your competition block and giving yourself the tools that you need to succeed, you're going to do much better as an individual. Um, and again, you know, when it comes to, to diet, how I eat in a competition block is quite different to an off-season. You know, off-season, I'm happy to catch up with friends. I don't really mind too much if my weight goes up or down. Um, as a whole, I try and eat around a little bit in surplus, nothing crazy. So maybe eat around an extra 250 to 500 calories a day, just depending on, you know, what sort of training I have. Um, and it's, you know, this competition coming up towards the end of the year, you know, I'm not going to be trying to diet down into the 110 kilo class, even though that's the class that I typically sit in. You know, I want to spend as much time as I can in the upcoming competition block to refine my skill on the big three, you know, with heavy weight um, in order to, you know, first chase down that total that I've set myself. You know, my long-term goal is to, you know, knock the thousand kilos. Um, and if I got to do that at a heavier weight class, so be it, you know, I'm just going to, you know, really use my in-season competition block just to play around with the heavy singles and heavy triples, you know, and keeping my work capacity with, you know, two or so back offsets. It's nothing sort of like what I'm doing now where, you know, I'm playing around with higher volume on additional exercises. If I tried to do that in a competition block, you know, while really pushing the big three, I'd have no, I, I just wouldn't recover. Um, you know, and then this off-season block, you know, it's been a little bit different. You know, I've moved houses at the, the start of the year. Um, newborn baby, little Chris came along, you know, March 30. So, you know, sleep for me the last few months has not been ideal. Um, and, you know, there's been a few adjustments in life. Again, I put that in the off-season. I wouldn't want to try and run a competition block, you know, with all those variables in the mix. It's just not smart. And that's something else people don't plan, you know life you know 
all your social activities and everything else in a competition block. Sometimes you've got to put them on hold. You know, at the end of the day, it might only be for eight to 10 weeks. And if you can do that, you know, the quality of your, you know, lifting on the platform is going to go up. But trying to maintain that year round is just going to cause, you know, burnout, um, you know, you know, begrudge your sport to an extent versus in the off season, if you're not too, you know, concerned about diet and other aspects like that, it's a great time to socialize, um, you know, and that keeps you balanced as an individual. And I think a lot of people don't know what balance is until they've been in a state where they haven't been balanced. And there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, it's just something that you've got to keep, you know, an eye on and understand, you know, that's, that's an aspect of life. And that's an aspect of this sport. If you can, you know, stick at this sport for a very long time, you're going to get strong. It's just about being consistent and not getting hurt. Um, so yeah, you know, you can see in this in this video, you know, I've obviously sped it up, but um, I've spent a lot of time in this off season just playing around with some pretty decent weight, developing general strength, and haven't hit any real heavy singles at all. So, yeah, look, you know, this is my off season sort of summed up, as well as a bit of a an explanation and to give you guys some advice. Um, you know, I'm sitting at the moment at 118 kilos with shoes on, not steel caps. Um, you know, with everything I'm wearing right now in that video, I'm close to the 120 kilo mark. But um, yeah, look, you know, calories sitting at three and a half to four thousand. Um, coming towards the end of this um, off season, so yeah, I'm just going to eat at maintenance, capitalize on all the strength that I've um, built, um, keep the work capacity. I'm going to start bringing back the the 10 minute daily runs just to feel that little bit um, fitter because I've gotten heavier. Um, and that's it, really. You know, that's my life as a as an Aussie powerlifter and a dad to to three boys. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions feel free to comment below, um, I'll do my best to get back to you, but yeah, you know, this is how I train, I'm chasing down my goals, and I still have time on my side, because I'm relatively young, you know, in the scheme of things, so um, yeah, that's me, have a great day wherever you are, and hit like and subscribe.